is uh, being an attrition the best job for the future? Today we're discussing that with Steve Ho, General Major Training here at the college. Hey Steve, can you tell us a bit more about how you can become an electrician? So to become an electrician you have to do an apprenticeship and it often starts with a pre-apprenticeship in school. Once you've finished your pre-apprenticeship you can enter into a training contract with an employer. So basically you get signed into an apprenticeship. During that time you'll be trained not only here at the college but also on the job. You'll learn how to do the things that you learn here in the real world with your boss and we'll teach you some of the theory and under uh, fundamental principles that relate to electrical. But the most important thing it is a training contract. So it's an opportunity for you to learn, to be taught and also get paid while you learn. Steve, what sort of jobs does an electrician do? So you can really break the electrical sector up into two, three things. So an electrician who works in the domestic sector would work on houses. They work around uh, apartments. They will do things like lights and power points, telephone points, aerial points for the TV, data points for the home network. So they work in the environment that people live in. As opposed to someone who's a commercial electrician. So a commercial electrician tends to work in things like schools or hospitals, shopping centres, uh, large office buildings. Their role is still to do lights and power, but more in that focus of the commercial environment. Finally is the industrial electrician. And industrial electricians is a, a very wide scope. So they might be working in things like plant and process. They might be working on a mine site or a petrochemical plant. They might be working remotely, doing some work in uh, areas that aren't necessarily a commercial or a domestic environment. Uh, renewable energy farms or solar farms are something that we're seeing, or wind farms would fall into those categories as well. So electricians who are working in those space, they have a slightly different role. They might be working with more high-end uh, voltages, so high voltage. They might be working too with equipment that you wouldn't generally see in the domestic or commercial sectors. But nonetheless, it's still electrical equipment, just more specialised for the industrial process. What if I want to work in the telecommunications industry? Do I still need to be an electrician for that? If you want to work in the telecommunications industry, Industry, you don't have to be an electrician, but we find that most electricians now are using their opportunity during their apprenticeship to do the telecommunications required to be able to get their open cabling registration. Uh, telecommunications is, is a great field to get into. We're starting to see things like power over ethernet, where you can power up lights, cameras, other automation equipment in the house or in the building using just a Cat5, Cat6 cable. So telecommunications is, is a burgeoning uh, area that we're starting to see. So it's not just the telephone, it goes well beyond that in these days. Steve, uh, a bit more about your journey as an electrician. How did you start and what have you done over the last 30 years? So I started my journey as an electrician way back in Sydney. I did my apprenticeship with a company called Wormwood and so we specialised in fire alarms, evacuation systems, exit emergency light systems, uh, fire pumps and things like that. Uh, it was an exciting time. I got to work on lots of different projects. I worked on the Sydney Harbour Tunnel, I worked on the Sydney Tower, so under the harbour and above the harbour. Uh, also got to work on the Sydney Harbour Bridge, so I had lots of different experiences in that space as well. But also equipment, so I got to work on uh, decommissioning submarines for museums. Uh, I worked on some ships uh, out of the dockyards. So lots of different things I was able to do as an electrician. Once I'd completed my apprenticeship though, I was able to take on the role of uh, working as a, an electrician technician. So again, had apprentices myself and was able to train them. Probably the most exciting thing though, was I was able to become an electrical estimator. I was uh, seen a, I saw an opportunity and was offered that opportunity. Uh, so as an electrical estimator, I would go over plans, I would prepare an estimate, uh, get quotes from suppliers, and then actually go and bid for those jobs and win them for the company. I think the uh, largest project I won back in the, in the 90s was a, a million dollar project, the uh, Finger Wharf down at Woolloomooloo. So a very exciting time. And that allowed me also to transfer. So when I moved to Perth, I transferred with the, the parent company and worked as an electrical estimator again over here in Western Australia. But uh, that background allowed me then to move into other areas. So I was able to become a manager, I learned how to do contract management and project management. And uh, now I find myself here in training as the general manager of training for the Electrical and Communications Association. So a very uh, long career, but at the back of it was always my electrical trade. 
One thing I can undoubtedly say that was valuable as well is that during my apprenticeship, I was able to undertake a business course. And that meant when I finished my apprenticeship, I was able to get my electrical contractor's ticket. And I've held electrical contractor's tickets over the years. Uh, currently don't because we train electrical contractors, so it might be a conflict of interest there. But uh, to be able to pass on knowledge is, is a wonderful thing. So I find myself now in the training environment, really enjoying being able to share over three decades worth of electrical experience with uh, these up and coming apprentices. What about those that would like again to become an electrical contractor? How can they achieve that? To become an electrical contractor, we have a, a fairly strict set of rules here in Western Australia. Uh, mainly because as you finish your apprenticeship and you become an electrician, you're responsible for yourself and for your own work. But an electrical contractor is responsible for the business and for employees. So you have to learn a bit more about the business side of things to become an electrical contractor. So we do things like teach you how to work profit and loss, cash flow, how to look at finances, uh, also the legislation around owning a business. So how do you make sure you pay your people correctly? How you report things to the government departments that need to be reported to? All of these things are very important if you're running an electrical contracting business. But also because you are going to have employees and potentially even your own apprentices that you'll be training, you have to be really au okay with the electrical requirements that a business owner needs to know. So we take what you've done as an apprentice and then as an electrician and we expand it out a little bit more so you can do that work safely. Of course being an electrical contractor is a great thing. You can start off as a one-man band running around uh, with a van and your, your name on the side and uh, yeah, it's a, certainly a very lucrative career but to the opportunities to even grow your business, to, to have a business with 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 employees. Uh, these are exciting times for electrical contractors because the electrical industry is becoming broader and broader. What future technologies do you see emerging that will have a big impact on the work that an electrician does in the future? So there's a number of future technologies that we see that will impact what an electrician does over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. But it's a natural progression from what was seen over the last probably 50 years. Industry 4.0 or the internet of everything has really changed our mind, uh, opened our minds as it were, to the opportunities that come from new technologies. So everyone's familiar now with uh, Google and Siri and uh, Amazon Echo and being able to use home automation in the uh, commercial world. We've seen things like CBUS for decades. But we're starting to see all of these technologies converge. So if we've seen things like uh, blockchain technology and supply chain logistics coming together, how does this work for future electricians? Well, we know they're going to be data centers. We've seen a far greater reliance on telecommunications and just being able to provide uh, good, stable Wi-Fi telecommunications outlets in people's houses. Something we definitely learned through COVID was working from home and how important it was to have a good internet connection. Uh, Zoom meetings and things like that certainly opened our eyes to all of the different parts of our industry, the electrotechnology industry, and how pivotal it was for being able to provide uh, these services in a time like COVID. But Going further, we're starting to see some of these technologies grow our minds. We're far more aware of our responsibilities as corporate citizens, as being citizens of the planet. Uh, environmental sustainability, uh, greenhouse, all of these things are very much front of mind. And as we move to a, a lower reliance upon uh, fossil fuels and to a greater reliance on renewable energy, we need to look at all of our energy usage. So reducing energy where we can and sourcing our energy from more sustainable sources is really important. I guess if you look at it in that perspective, things like uh, electric, electricians working with plumbers probably seem like a pipe dream, to, excuse the pun, but we're actually seeing now where hydrogen cell technology will actually become a, a permanent feature of people's lives. You might have your solar panels on the roof, the Tesla battery on the wall, you might have your, your hybrid car that uh, you, you drive to and from work and it actually might end up being fueled by hydrogen. So having a fuel cell in your garage as well might be the future. So where we see plumbers and electricians come together. But very exciting times that we live in. And I think as we move further and further up down the track and we see things like power over ethernet, where you can power up your cameras or your lights, all of these things coming together is uh, leads for a long career for anyone doing an apprenticeship right now. Is there something that you'd like to say to any future electrician right now as to why they should choose electrotechnology as the industry for them? So the electrical trade has been around for a long time. We've seen a change 
But one thing you can be assured of is that any future technology be underpinned by the electrical skills that you learn as an apprentice and then can carry on as an electrician or a telecommunications technician. We would always imagine that there's going to be a need for lights and power. Uh, how that looks in the future, who knows, but certainly over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years as we see people transition away from the traditional uses of electricity to more modern forms and modern uses of electricity, there is potential for an electrician to find themselves in different niches or be able to do many different things. Uh, I, if I was uh, starting my time again, I'd be certainly choosing to become an electrician because I've seen it's been how it's been for the last 30 years and I think over the next 30 years we'll see even greater changes. Who knows, we might be using things like SpaceX and you get to go into space, who knows? But the reality is all of those technologies, all of these opportunities are underpinned by being an electrician.